Hi, my name is Kenny Rosen, the founder and CEO of Franchares, and today we're going to talk about the most profitable franchises of 2024. Now, I have to throw a big asterisk on here. This is not the most profitable for you. You're going to find out which one's the most profitable for you when you explore different franchises out there. There's over 4,000 different franchise brands, which are more stocks than there are on the NASDAQ. I'm picking five that I like. You have your own unique skill set, you have your own unique goals, and you can find your own unique franchise for you but we're here to get your brain thinking. Franchising is a great way to be in business for yourself, but not by yourself, and having these business systems in place in order to have success. Now, franchising covers hundreds of different industries, as you'll see from this list, and you'll see how different industries can impact different types of profitability. When it comes to maximizing franchise success, you need to look at several different factors that impact your profitability. One thing, obviously, is the cost. Now, the cost of a franchise can vary greatly. You can see them for as little as 30,000, which is really just usually the franchise fee, or they can be up to millions and millions of dollars. Now, things that impact how much a franchise cost could be, is there a location? Are you on a retail location or are you a home-based business? Perhaps you're based out of a truck. Perhaps you are mostly a sales-driven organization. These all affect your profitability because you have different startup costs. Fees will definitely impact how much success you have. Now, fees in franchising come in two forms, the franchise fee and the ongoing royalty. The franchise fee is a one-time payment, and it's basically the cost of getting that business in a box that would take you five or 10 years at least to develop yourself. The royalty is that ongoing support. They're invested in your success. In fact, most franchises are not making money from the franchise fee. They're doing that as a loss earner because they spent hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to build that business and also to franchise it so you can have it yourself. Royalties come in a very wide range as well. If you're in something that's more of a low margin business like food, it could be anywhere from the three and a half to six and a half percent or even more. Service-based franchises typically carry a higher franchise fee because their services are what you're getting from the franchise that you can then give off to your clients. Service-based franchises can be anywhere from 10 to 15% royalty, and yes, I've seen even higher. Now, that's not to say that these are unacceptable, but you need to understand the business. It's why it's very important to research this franchise yourself. If you could have been the first McDonald's franchise in your area, but they said it was going to be 10% royalty, which is over twice what they typically charge, you'd probably take it in a heartbeat. So don't look at a number and get scared. Research it, understand it, and see if that franchise is a good fit for you. Another really important factor of maximizing your success is finding the right franchise. Now, if you check out some of our other videos, I go more into how to find the right franchise for yourself. But once you do find it, how do you continue to increase the returns? Well, one could be having great management in place. Now, one of the most common mistakes I see in franchising is people trying to find not the best manager, but the cheapest one. You get what you pay for. And this can also be said about your investment as a whole. So if you decide to save a few bucks on where your location is going to be, or not do as much for your grand opening marketing. You may think you're being a savvy investor saving dollars, but really you're eroding at that foundation that is the proven business model you just purchased. Let's take a look at some of our most profitable franchises of 2024. Our criteria for these franchises include locations, so how many are there across the country? Are they opening or closing locations? What's their geographic reach? Also includes startup costs, how much it takes to get the business get going. And you'll note when you start doing your research, it's not just a one size fits all cost. This comes in the form of a range because it costs a different amount to open something in North Dakota as it does in New York. These costs are also outlined as line items so that you can understand exactly where your investment is going to. This is part of the regulation of franchising as required by the Federal Trade Commission. We also look at the financials of a franchise. Part of franchise regulation allows you to provide a financial performance representation that shows what the performance of a franchise could be. Now, these are never guaranteed, but they do have to be based on actual factual numbers. These are also based on the previous success of the franchises. This can come in all shapes and sizes. Say the number of memberships if you're running a gym franchise. Sometimes you'll get an average, sometimes you'll get a range. So they're all gonna look a little different. It's hard to compare apples to apples, but we did the studying for you here. Coming in at number five, with over 500 locations across the country, is Pearl Vision. If it sounds familiar, you may have seen them around as a customer because they help you with eye care. Pearl Vision was founded in 1961 but didn't start franchising until 20 years later. The startup costs for Pearl Vision range from 639,000 to just shy of a million dollars, including a franchise fee of 30,000. 
the average EBITDA for one of these locations is over $1.1 million. Dog Training Elite comes in at number four on this list. And as you can imagine, that we're training dogs. Everything from potty training to how to deal with pet anxiety. Approaching 300 locations across the country, they were started in 1995, but didn't start franchising until 2015. The startup cost for a Dog Training Elite ranges from just over $150,000 to $185,000. Now this includes a whopping franchise fee of $110,000. This large franchise fee might shock you, but you have to see what's under the hood before you run away. Because their average EBITDA is almost a million dollars from a sub $200,000 investment. Tint World just entered franchising's holy grail over 100 locations. Only about 15% of franchises actually hit this mark. And they do tints, everything from your home, boat, and auto. Tint World was founded in 1982 and didn't start franchising until 2007, which means they had a lot of time to get these business systems in place. The startup costs range from 289,000 to just shy of 470,000, with a franchise fee of around 50,000. Their average EBITDA is 883,000. Number two on the list, 1-800 radiator and AC. You know the number and you know what they do. With nearly 200 locations, they started franchising in 2005. Their startup costs range from 457,000 to about 1.3 million, including a franchise fee of 45,000. Their average EBITDA is over $2.3 million annually. Serta Pro Painters is one of the oldest franchises in the painting space and they have a lot to show for it. They have over 300 locations and their costs range anywhere from 155,000 to over 215,000. This includes a franchise fee of over $65,000. Their average EBITDA is over $2.4 million per year. One thing you'll notice about a lot of these businesses is that they don't have a storefront and the real estate that some of them do have doesn't need to be that class A real estate right in the middle of your downtown. It can be off the beaten path because you're driving people to you or it's an outbound sales organization. Now, because the location is not what drives people in, means your skill set and the systems in place is what does. So you need to follow the business model and you need to make sure that your skill set aligns with what the skill sets required of that franchise. For example, Serta Pro Painters is very heavy on sales and project management. So if you don't have those two skills, you're not going to reach those average numbers. Now we talked about some big franchise investments and a lot of people may not have all that money. That's why it's important to check out other ways to invest in the franchise industry. If you check out FranShares, you can invest in franchises for as little as $500 and invest into different industries like these and build your own portfolio instead of going all in into one franchise. You can learn more at FranShares.com and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So remember, the top franchises are typically not unknowns. You don't find them by accident, you find them through research. Make sure you do all of your due diligence. Don't take one person's word as the right franchise for you. Compare different options in different industries. Don't forget to come back for more content and thanks for watching.